Let's say the attacker mistook Clara for Julia. Do you know where Clara is now? She's dead. And who would this someone be? Jared Miles. And it concerns me you're going after him on the basis he's a threat to me because that's unfounded. What's going on here, Neil? Maybe Julia Bickham is the real target. The incident with her patient. This is you trying to assuage your guilt. You saved her life. You tell me Jared Miles is out to get me. You keep pursuing it even when I tell you it doesn't make sense. Do you know a woman called Julia Bickham? No comment. You're trying to make reparations for what happened before. What do you make of Julia? I'm sorry? I'm just wondering why this case is feeling so complicated. You've been here all night? What's going on here, Neil? You've been here all night? You've been here all night? Yeah, I was just... Uh... Grace, I'm sorry about last night. I was... I was out of order. We were all tired. Go home. Let someone else finish up. I know you didn't think that Jared was a viable suspect yesterday, but he's in custody. And given what happened overnight... I'm scared we're focusing all our energies on him, when there could be another suspect out there. And I don't want anyone else to get hurt. As you know, last night there was a hit and run on a cyclist, Harry Gilmartin. Harry Gilmartin is the partner of Dr. Julia Bickham. We believe Dr. Julia Bickham was the intended target of an assault yesterday. Well, we don't know that for sure. No, but it's highly likely. Uh, Jared Miles was arrested on suspicion of both assaults and we've got him in custody. But I don't want us to stop investigating this case. Sorry? I don't want us to limit ourselves. I thought you just said that he was involved in both incidents. Yeah, but we can't be sure. When do we start resting on our laurels just because something works on paper? I'm not resting on anything, boss. I'm just suggesting that maybe we might want to interview him first. Well, let's remember that he's got a history of mental illness. He's vulnerable. I don't want to pressure him to the point that he tells us something that we want to hear. Look, I don't want any stone left unturned on this, okay? I want to make damn sure we get the right person. Yeah? Okay, that's it. Thank you. Grace, is everything all right with this case? Fine, sir. Have a word in my office. I know a problem when I see one, Grace. So, what is it? D.I. Manson. Obviously, there's a lot of history attached to this investigation. You mean the shooting of Michael Sin? The Julia Bickham connection? I know it was two years ago. But I think it's still a complicating factor. I think you may be using this investigation to make amends for what happened before. Well, he had to make a call on a man's life, and he made the wrong call. It takes longer than a day to get over something like that. I'm not criticising. No, neither am I, but I don't want this whole thing to fall apart because he's too close to it. So what's your honest opinion? If he thought he was jeopardising the inquiry, he'd take himself off it. You sure about that? Yeah. How's he doing? Fractured pelvis, femur. He's stable. Do you know how it happened? Not yet, no. But you think it was delivered? It's got to be someone you or Harry knows. You could be in danger, Julia, and you need to think. I don't know. Well, what about Harry? Is there anyone who might have a grudge against him? No. Love? No? Right. Don't worry, we'll find him. All I wanted was somewhere safe to sleep, and that's why I took the car. Jared, you remember having an accident in the car? Did you hit a cyclist? Right, you hit a cyclist on Trafford Way, and then you drove off, didn't you? No, oh, I didn't. I crashed into another parked car. Oh, yeah, where was that? 
Right, you stole a car, but you can't remember where from. Then you had an accident in it, but you don't remember where. Now, in all your lapses of memory, you're absolutely positive you were nowhere near Trafford Way in between. Isn't that right? Yes. Jared, yesterday we found footage of you near the market, not too far away from where the serious incident took place. Now, you claim you knew nothing about it. Then last night we had a phone call from your probation officer saying he's just had a conversation with you about a boy, a child. And Mike, your probation officer, tries to talk to you about it and you lash out at him. You remember that? Jared, we believe the little boy was present at this sort of thing. This is true. And this raises some serious questions. I haven't done anything wrong. And you've got absolutely nothing to worry about, OK? Just tell us how you came across the little boy. I just saw him, the boy. Are we still sure he's got nothing to do with us? Girl. You've been on to Harry's gym. It's where Julius said he was last night prior to the hit and run. Right. The staff have been through the CCTV and he's not showing up. They say he always works out at lunchtime anyway. I did also go through his mobile. He received a call three quarters of an hour before the incident and he made a call to the same number earlier in the day. It's pay as you go, and it's stored in his contact list under the initial S. Okay. Now, I've no idea who this is. Why don't you just call the number? I have done. Let's go straight to automated voicemail. Does he have any friends or work colleagues with the initial S? No. I don't know. But you need to check with the gym again. They've made a mistake. They've got a swipe card system, so we know he was there at midday. No, that's not right. He goes there every Monday and Thursday night. Always has done ever since I've known him. I'm sorry, Julia. That doesn't appear to be the case. Because Harry got a diary or anywhere he writes appointments. Um, the laptop. Do you mind if we take a look? No. There's nothing in the diary. No surprise there. If he's lying about where he's going to Julia, he's not going to write it down, is he? How long have they been together? He said she moved in with him nine months ago. Yeah. I wonder how well she knows him. What do you mean? It's the motor that Uniform found Jared in. The Dark Saloon was involved in the attack on Clara Novak, and the Dark Saloon ran down Harry last night. What do you know? A woman who owns the red Nissan over there, Terry, said it was undamaged yesterday afternoon. Right. Right, so this one's obviously it, that one. Tallies with Jared's statement about driving into a parked car. I plug over there had a conversation with the driver of this car last night. Said he told him to move it was parked on double yellows. What time? About quarter to ten. That's about a quarter of an hour before I was knocked off his bike. Mm. Oh, the witness said the driver was asleep on the back seat, but like Jared was when we found him last night. Well, there you go. There's Jared's alibi on it. The DI was right. Jared couldn't have done it and run. All right, thanks, fellas. Cheers. What have we got then? Hey, there's the car. There's Harry. Go. Paint samples taken from Clara Novak's car just come back from the lab. They're from a dark blue Rover 496 to 2000. Thank you. All right, there you go. Looks like that could be a Rover. We need a clearer shot of that index, yeah? Looks like someone is after Julia. Or a partner. Personally, I think this is more likely to be about Harry Gilmartin. Why do you say that? I ran a PNC on him. He's got form for ABH. None of the charges have got results on them, so we need to check with the case progression unit, see what's happening. Look at this geezer's running around starting fights. Maybe he's made some enemies. Exactly. Can we look into it? No, you deal with Jared. Grace, you can deal with Harry. OK? Yeah. So he was arrested three times in 2006. Both assaults were on his ex-wife's new boyfriend. The police were called out another five times to her address because the neighbours reported raised voices, sounds of a fight. Where did these incidents take place? She lived on Kingsdown Street. Kingsdown Street? Mm. Well, if I'm not mistaken, Kingsdown Street is about a quarter of a mile, yep, from where Harry came off his bike. Maybe that's where he was, at his exes. That would explain why he lied to Julia. All this happened three years ago. So? Why didn't you mention this morning that you'd done a check on him? When did you do it? Last night. After the hit and run? Before. Why? Interesting.
We know that Jared wasn't involved in the hit and run and the assault. I told you that yesterday. We've also identified the make and model of the car that hit Harry, and we believe it's the same car that was involved in the assault on Clara Novak. So you know what that means? That means one person is doing this. I don't know who that one person might be. Okay, do you think Harry might know? Harry's been in trouble with the police in the past. You didn't know? What for? Assault. Looks like he had a few wrangles with his ex-wife's new partner. You knew he'd been divorced, right? Of course I did. Do you know if he still sees his ex-wife? No. It's just she lives around the corner from where Harry had his accident last night. She hasn't got back to us as yet. He would never do that to me. He just wouldn't. All right, mate. Will you take a seat on the bench? They're saying I've done stuff, Mike. They know. You had nothing to do with the hit and run. And they know you didn't assault anyone. You need to tell the police about what happened yesterday. About the boy. They need your help. What did you see, Jared? It just looked normal. Father getting his son out of the car. Near the market. It's true what I said. I was running. I was trying to get to my probation appointment on time. That's when I saw it. What did you see? The man was crying. He was really crying. Jack, can you describe him at all? I... middle-aged. I'm not sure. What about the car? It was dark blue. Make model. Jared said this man was crying. Yeah, sobbing apparently. What well, Clara said yesterday that the man who attacked us stopped when he heard Tom cry out. He wasn't expecting the kid to be in the car. Which adds weight to the theory that he missed to Clara for Julia. I mean, if he'd been watching Julia, he realised that she doesn't have a kid. Go on. We've got an index for the car and an owner, Stephen Fairfax. Right. Has he got any form? No, but that's his address. Thanks, Roger. Let's go. You open the door, it's the police. Someone's come. Sorry, I was just having a nap. Stephen Fairfax? Yeah. Detective Inspector Manson. DC Dastry's son, Hill. I want to talk to you about your car. We found it. What do you mean? It was stolen about a month ago. We did a check on the vehicle back at the station. It didn't come up as stolen. Yeah, well, it wasn't insured. Where were you last night? About 10 o'clock. Just down the pub. Which pub? Lord Banbury Picket Road. Were you there with anyone? While I'm here, there's another incident. I'd like to ask you about an assault. Took place yesterday morning. I don't know anything about that. Obviously, we're going to check your alibi, but I wonder, would you come down to the station, answer a few questions? I don't think so. You don't have to come voluntarily, sir. I haven't done anything. Stephen Fairfax, I'm arresting you on suspicion of grievous bodily harm. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. I've given you an alibi for last night. I've told you my car was stolen. What more can I do? Does the name Julia Bickham mean anything to you? What about Harry Gilmartin? No, nah, nothing. Tell me about yourself, Stephen. You what? Tell me about yourself. What do you do for a living? Unfortunately, I'm on benefits at the moment. Sorry about that. What did you do before? Bits and bobs. Construction, security. Family? No family? None that I'm in contact with. Well, um, life must be quite lonely. No job, 
Got no family. How do you fill your time? I read. What books? Amongst other things. I'm quite interested in the law, actually. And I don't think you've got any reason to keep me here. We spoke to staff of the Lord Banbury. They back up Stephen Fairfax's story. And he was there last night. Yeah, but they don't know when he left, though. Apparently he's down there every night. Don't talk to anybody. He sits on his own. Orders a couple of pints, nurses in, then he's on his toes. And did they know anything about him? Yeah, apparently he said that he came to money. What sort of money? Well, enough for a new life abroad. What, like an inheritance? That's what the bartender told us. Apparently it's the only bit of information he's ever given up about himself. It was never mentioned after that. And you're certain he was lying about having his car stolen? Yeah. And he's never heard of Gil Martin or Julia? That's what he's saying, but I reckon we might have a different story when we mention Fairfax's name to them. I don't know a Stephen Fairfax. Well, maybe you could look at your records. Your patient records. Julia, if you could just check, please. Like you said yourself, you can't remember every patient that's passed through your care. Could you take Julia back to her office, please, Chris? I don't want to go. I want to stay here. When Harry wakes up, I'll call you. I promise. Has Harry been in prison? No, just cautioned. Why didn't he tell me? It's the kind of thing you want to keep under wraps, isn't it? You obviously think he's still seeing his ex? Really, we don't know. I'm just wondering what else I'm going to find out. Fairfax. Stephen Fairfax. No, I'd remember the name if it meant anything to me. Sorry. OK, well, uh, tell me about the accident. Do you remember the car going into you? Not the actual moment it happened, but... The lead-up, yeah. I yelled at the driver and um, I chested him to pull out. So he was cutting you up? He's driving dangerously close to me. As you mean to the curb. Did you get a look at him? No, I know it was a man. It's a white guy. Apart from that, I couldn't tell you anything about him. You said you nearly left your job after Michael Sims was shot. The hospital were great. Gave me open-ended leave, offered me a new post, but I was still in shock. Ended up back at my parents. Not in a very good way. Then I met Harry. What were you doing on Trafford Way? I was coming back from the gym. I decided to take the uh, bike out for a bit longer. Well, I'm going to level with you, Harry. We know you don't go to the gym. When you tell Julia, you go to the gym, OK? We also know your ex-wife lives near Trafford Way, so... No, 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 no this, this has got nothing to do with We it. also know that you've had a few problems with your ex-wife's new fella, so... What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about, Harry. So you start talking to me. He was brilliant. Completely supportive. Is this your ex-wife's phone number? <sighs> it's Sean. He's my sponsor. Sponsor of what? Last night I was at an AA meeting. Julie. Julia doesn't know. There's no one with the surname Fairfax here. How far back do the records go? Four years. OK. I'll give you a lift back to the hospital. Um, actually, I think I'll make my own way. I need to let people know what's happening here. OK. Thank you. I was working really hard, 13, 14 hour days, and it just sort of crept up on me, really, when my marriage started breaking down. When was that? It's about a year before I got arrested. I found out that Susie was seeing someone else, so I started drinking even more. I lost my job. It's just all the usual stuff. Tell me about the ABH. I waited outside Susie's house until her boyfriend came out, and then I just went for him. By the time I met Julia, all that stuff was a distant memory. 
I know I should have told her. I always meant to. Why didn't you? She wasn't in a good way. It wasn't long after the shooting incident you were involved in. Michael Sims. I never set out to lie to her. I really didn't. Julie's got to hear this from me. I don't want you telling her. Uh, we mentioned your arrests to Julia earlier today. Why? Why did you do that? Julia! Take her life's in danger going. You go in. They shot Michael! He didn't have a gun! He didn't have a gun! Oh. So, um... Julia doesn't know Fairfax. Harry doesn't know Fairfax, and I've just thrown a hand grenade into a perfectly good relationship. Now hang on. Harry chose not to tell Julia certain things about himself. Yeah, because he was busy propping her up after I shot one of her patients. You didn't shoot him. No, I didn't shoot him. I didn't actually pull the trigger. If only I hadn't run his name through that system. So why did you? Because I wanted him to be the bad guy. Rather than you? Yes! Yes. You are not to blame for what happened to Michael Sims. Well, Julia doesn't think that. You heard her. No, she didn't want to be reminded of it. She didn't want to revisit the whole thing. She wasn't blaming you. That's you. You're blaming yourself. It's not fair. <sighs> what do we do now? Pursue Fairfax? I've released him, I've bailed him. There's nothing we can tie him to. Okay. Why don't we go back to our original witness? The little boy. I think we've got all we can get out of Thomas Sons. We could show him a video lineup with Fairfax in it. A trip out in the car, innit? So, I've got toys today, haven't I? You sit up on this chair like a big boy. Now, this is dead easy. All you've got to do... Has Thomas spoken to you any more about what happened yesterday morning? Yeah, uh, in a sort of garbled way. Uh, he's upset about Clara. I don't think he actually saw what happened to her, though, thank God. First one. Has he said anything else? He keeps going on about a sad man. You know, sad to him, meaning crying, tears. Uh, he said that someone helped him in a car park and showed him towards the market. What about this man? Well, that makes sense. Well, yes. Him? Remember yesterday when you said that Clara had another name? Did this man call Clara by a different name? And do you remember what that name was? Jules. Tom, did this man call Clara Jules or something like Jules. Thomas is not going to pull the name Jules out of thin air. Yeah, but Jules isn't Julia, is it? It's near enough. When Tom picked out Fairfax from the video lineup, it's enough to pull him in. Yeah, We've no idea who this bloke is. Harry and Julia have never heard of him. We could do some more digging. Yeah, but I don't want to lose sight of him. Let's get some surveillance on him. OK. Boss, I was wondering if it was all right to release Jared. Terry, he should have been out of here hours ago. I've been talking to, uh, to the Vincent Project. What's that? Place out in Essex. They, they deal with the homeless that have mental health issues, or drug abuse problems. And they've got a place for him, haven't they? Potentially, as long as he doesn't get a uh, custodial sentence, that is. His probation officer's OK with us? Yeah. Well, good work, Terry. Nice one. Go off. The troll's found Fairfax's car. Where is it? On the cops on a state, a bit of waste ground. We talked to Fairfax about his car. Two hours later, we find it burnt out. Bit of a coincidence, don't you think? This is good news. The fact he's bodged this, he's getting sloppy. Anything from surveillance? Not yet, Gov. 
148 from 275, targets left his house. He's heading west down Tilson Street in the direction of the Elmcom estate. Two seven five from four three seven. I've got him. Following on foot. One four eight from four three seven. Yeah, go ahead. Right, Fairfax is waiting at a bus stop. On my way, we'll tail him. Fairfax went inside the property about fifteen minutes ago. Can you give me that address again? Yeah, it's 109 Walking Avenue. No, it's coming out. Hang on, something's happening. He's having an argument with an IC1 older female. He's leaving the address. Right, we'll keep following him. We'll head down to the house. Yeah. D.I. Manson, Sun Hill. This I is DC. This last week it was social services. Now it's the police. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not playing this game anymore. Uh, I think we've got our wires crossed. We're not responding to a call out. Two of our uniform officers saw a man called Stephen Fairfax at this house 45 minutes ago. Now we desperately need information about him. Why? We think he was involved in a hit and run and an assault. You know him. He's Lily's father. Who's Lily? My granddaughter. So Stephen Fairfax is your son-in-law? My daughter never married him. And they're not together now? Danielle died. I'm sorry about that. It's quite a while ago now. I got custody of my daughter's little girl. The courts felt he wasn't the best place to bring her up. Stephen wants her back. There's been lots of disputes about access. It's all turned very nasty in the last few months. Where's Lily now? With my sister. Is this her? Mm. How old is she? Three and a half. Stephen's behaviour changed recently. After her death, he changed. Five years ago, you couldn't find a more caring, considerate bloke. But he never came to terms with it. He's so angry, she's gone. And then there's the whole fiasco over the money. What money? Life insurance. He copied me in on all the letters. They both took out a policy when they found out Daniela was pregnant. Her and Stephen? After her death, Stephen found out there was a clause in the policy. The insurance company wouldn't pay out. He's been contesting it ever since, got lawyers involved. And then about six weeks ago, the final ruling came through. He lost his claim. What was this clause in the policy? Danielle committed suicide. Stephen always maintained it was an accidental overdose. The inquest ruled that she'd done it deliberately, taken her own life. He thinks if he had the money, he'd be able to get custody of Lily. It's rubbish or make-believe, but it's become like an obsession with him. Prior to your daughter's death, was she getting help from doctors? She'd been diagnosed with depression five years ago. He still can't accept he couldn't fix her. That's why he's lashing out at everyone else. After Danielle had been diagnosed with depression, was she referred to a doctor or a psychiatrist? Do you know who? It was a lady. Was it Bickham? Dr. Julia Bickham? That's it. I haven't seen her. Julia told me she was coming back here. Well, she obviously changed her mind. She hasn't phoned? 
You have no idea where she might be. She's probably back at the flat, packing her things. No, that can't be right. She was desperate to see you as soon as you came round. Well, even after she heard everything? Yeah. I mean, she didn't know you were going to AA meetings. I think she was worried you were seeing her ex-wife. Tell her. Tell her everything. I will. I just need to find out where she's gone. Well, you don't think anything's wrong? Hello? Grace, Julie's not in her office, and no one's seen her since two hours ago. We need to go to a flat. I'll see you there. Julia. Julia! Uniform of Lost Fairfax. Concierge said he saw Julia's car being driven out of here about half an hour ago by some bloke. Was Julia in the car? He said he didn't know. I think someone was in the passenger seat. Fairfax has been keeping tabs on Julia and Harry for two weeks. Obviously, he knows where she works. He could have waited for her at the hospital and followed her home, or just waited for her at home. Are we sure that Dr. Bickham has a connection with Danielle Haynes? Well, I've spoken to the hospital. Julia was Daniel Haynes' psychiatrist. She also gave evidence at the inquest supporting the idea that Danielle had committed suicide. Right, that trace we put on Dr. Bickham's phone, nothing's come back yet. Mickey, what about the car? A uh, call's been put out to all units, Governor. Nothing back. Right, we need to station an officer next to Harry's bed. We need to ping Fairfax's phone and search his house. Sir. So how did we lose Fairfax? It was a crowded marketplace, sir. And Julia Bickham, I mean, it didn't occur to either of you to put tabs on her. That was my fault, sir. I'm not interested. I just want this situation sorted. We're on it, sir. Grace. I thought I told you to come to me. It was all OK. Well, it's not now, is it? We're wasting our time here, you know. All this correspondence is to do with his insurance claim. It must have taken his every waking moment. How much money was he expecting to get? Listen, it probably wasn't even about the money. What do you mean? He throws himself into some big legal battle. It means he doesn't have to think about anything else. His wife, he doesn't have to grieve. What about Harry? He's lashing out at anyone who's close to Julia. Well done. Jerry? Yeah. Boss? Fairfax has got a gun license. Angela, does Stephen own a gun? I don't know. What's happening? He's not at his house. He's been missing for two and a half hours. We need to find him. Have you got any idea where he might be? No, to be honest, I have as little to do as Stephen does I can. I don't know what he does with himself during the day. Is there anyone else that he's close to? No one has anything to do with him these days. But what about work? He used to have a really good job. Doing what? Running security on building sites, derelict buildings that developers have bought, that sort of thing. OK, have you got a name of the company? I'll find out for you. Thank you. OK, where are we at? Right, still nothing on her phone. Now, that either means the battery's dead or it's been removed. We pinged his and it's the same. However, the phone company said that he made a call about an hour ago in this area. The security firm have sent through a list of buildings and sites that Fairfax was in charge of when he worked for them. Well, these two are in the area. Get your uniform to check him out. Yes, boss. Sir. Oh, I can't stand them. Pigeons. Rats with wings. Okay, Roger. Seal off the area. We're on our way. I knew it. I knew this would happen. Go. He's armed. He's volatile. It's happening again. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'll copy that. Yeah, I'm checking it out. Terry. Yeah. I want to plan the inside of this building. The super's already onto it. It's liaising with the armed response unit now. Okay. Call CAD. I want all sirens from patrol stopped as they're approaching. Yes, boss. Terry, give me the plan. Yeah, boss, I'm onto it. Okay, who's going to go in on his own? Without any backup? That's madness. Someone's got to talk to him. Grace, you're the only person I listen to. Now get over there and talk to him. 
Silent approach, everyone. Silent Can't approach. Can't go in there without any backup. Okay. We've just got to hold tight and wait for the super's instructions. You saw the blood on Julia's car, right? We don't know how injured she is. I mean, he may have shot her already. I just want to get a visual, right? I, I just, just want to get a visual. I, I don't want you to get hurt. Tell you what, why don't we get a helicopter to land on the roof? Please, don't do this. So you let him go in on his own? He wanted to do a recce boss. He wanted to get a visual on him. Are you mad? You know that Fairfax might have a gun, don't you? Sierra Oscar 7 0 for 5 2. Neil. Stephen, it's D.I. Manson. I'm on my own and I'm unarmed, all right? Stephen, listen to me. I only want to... Respond! I only want to know if Julia is okay. Look, I think I understand what this is all about. You don't know anything. I know about Danielle. I know you've got a little girl. Don't talk about them! Neil, please! Sir, so, got a plan in the building. It's a flaming labyrinth, isn't it? He's never gonna get a clear visual in there. I want you lot inside. Right, we're going in. Stephen, you believe that if you hurt Julia, you'll feel better, yeah? And you'll get rid of all that rage. You won't feel any better. What will you be left with, eh? Stephen, you will spend every moment of your waking day trying to justify what you did and you will never justify it Stephen believe me you will never justify it please do the right thing let Julia go Stephen Stephen do the right thing please let Julia go please Stephen Stephen It's okay, Stephen. It's okay. It's okay, Stephen. Look at me, Stephen. Stephen. Look at me. Just give me the gun. It's over. You see, we can just walk out of here, me and you. That's it. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Oh, no, 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 no! D.I. Manson! D.I. Manson! Do not shoot! Do not shoot! You are not gonna die. You are not gonna die, Stephen. Look at me. It's okay. Please give me the gun. Let Please. the gun go. Let the gun go. Just let him shoot. I'm not going to do that. You are not going to die. Okay? Let the gun go, Steve. Let it go. That's it. That's it. He's unarmed. Get He's unarmed. He's unarmed. Boys, stand on the floor with your arms down on your knees. On your knees. On your knees. Copy me. Go on your knees. On your knees. That's it. That's it. Do what I do. Copy me. Okay, on your front. That's it. That's it. It's okay. Put your arms out. Put your arms out. Put your arms out. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah. You'll be lucky to keep your job after this. So sack me. Neil. 
Well done for today. Get yourself back to the Nick. I'm going with Julia to the hospital. She needs to see her boyfriend. Tell Harry you're here. Thank you. For what you said to Fairfax. How you played it? It wasn't play acting, it was how I feel. Michael Sims was with me in that office. I knew he didn't have a gun. And I knew there were marksmen waiting outside the door. Yeah. I could have told everyone he was unarmed. Instead, I froze. So who's more guilty, you or me? Neither of us acted out of malice, Neil. We did what we could in that moment. It's over. If you're about to give me a lecture, please don't. Well, there's nothing to say, is there? You saved her. And you were reckless. And you scared the hell out of me. I'm sorry. You off? Yep. Unless you want to get some food? Oh. I'd join you lot on any other night, but not tonight. <laughs> oh, let's go. Okay. Why today? Well, everyone got out alive. We nicked the right bloke. Yeah, we got a result, but I've no way. Yeah. So where are you off? Going home. Dr. Grace said you were going to get something to eat. No, I wasn't invited. No, I mean, either. What's all that about? Maybe she's in a shock. Joseph Sisulu. Someone made an anonymous 999 call from a mobile registered in your name, Joseph. You're asking me to use this boy's trust to betray him? I can't believe he crossed me up! I had no choice! I'll be watching you. I'll be watching you, detective. 